you later, that's not the case. One of the biggest reasons is financial. Uh, there's a lot of silent film stars, including Joe, that died either during the Great Depression or right around it, and they just didn't have money. They either found money somehow for a plot, but something like a headstone was kind of a luxury, so they were just buried in unmarked graves. Cremains Missing is one I have recently come across. The actor Thomas Mitchell, who's famous for being in the movie Gone with the Wind as Mr. O'Hara, is literally gone with the wind. We have no idea where he is, so that's a process we're working on, is finding where he went. Um, the Last Wishes, there are some people that wish to remain unmarked. Lon Chaney is a big one. I've had people ask me to mark Lon, but he didn't want that. I don't want to be haunted by the Lon Chaney, so <laughs> I'm not doing that one. Um, so if it is their last wish, we let it go. I'm not going to do it. Um, Lon and Frank Zappa is another one. Um, I'll do questions afterwards. Why well, I want to know you. Wait. Lon Jr. or Lon? Oh, sorry, Lon uh, Sr. Okay. Lon Jr., I actually don't know off the top of my head. But good question. Um, paperwork error, that one is another one we've come across. Uh, most recently with um, singer Tony Martin. Everything was filled out for his headstone, and someone just forgot to file it. It's, it was as simple as that. So these are the main reasons, but a lot of the time, we just don't know. It's just kind of coming to your own conclusion. So Joe, why Mark Joe? Because he's been a very important part of not only theatrical history, but also silent film history. He wasn't just Buster's father, he was also an actor in his own right. Why was he unmarked? That's one of those I just don't know. Um, with talking with uh, Melissa, Thomas Coffey talked about possibilities. Was it money? He died right around the time when he was going through a bad time. Buster was going through a bad time. So it's just one of those things where we just have to come to the conclusion that it was one of those luxury things that he just couldn't get a headstone. Where was Buster? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the plot drama was something we came across. Um, so in order for me to get permission as a non-family member to mark someone, I have to get next of kin permission. So we did get that, but then when I went to the cemetery, which he's at Inglewood in Inglewood, California, um, I went there and found out that no one in the Keaton family owned this plot. It was a family that I can't even remember their last name, but it was someone unrelated, and they owned about seven other plots surrounding him, and they were all different people. The guy that helped me, he has a more official title, I don't remember it. <laughs> um, he told me that he has seen some cases where churches would buy a group of plots and donate them to people that had passed either in their church or outside of the community to have them be buried there. This is what we're assuming. I did some research on the family. Um, that owned the plots, and I believe I read that they were Joe's neighbor, either, either Joe's neighbor or Myra's neighbor. Um, so it was one of those cases where this family donated this plot. Myra, um, they were separated at the time, but she signed off on it saying, he can have this plot, here's the cemetery, take care of it, whatever. She signed off on everything, but this plot is in some other family's name. Although now the headstone has my name on it and Melissa's name. So if you want to change it, you have to come through me. And Melissa. <laughs> the headstone process, like I said, the first and the hardest part is finding next of kin. But for this one, thanks to Alec, this was an easy one. He put me in contact with Melissa, which was great. And she was well on board of this. You have to call the cemeteries for placement fees and dimension layout requirements. Some cemeteries are very picky. Um, for the most part, you just find a headstone, granite, bronze, whichever. Um, I work with a special company that I came in contact with during my process that I've been, or all these campaigns I've been doing. Um, and it's, fun, it's funny now, um, I actually have a frequent buyer discount. Which I <laughs> So I'm in, I'm in good standing with this company. 
Um, usually, my first go-to in every other headstone I've done is granite. It's a cheaper option. When I spoke to Alec, he said, I think we can raise the money for bronze. I was extremely nervous, um, but I said, okay, we're going to do bronze. So I created the GoFundMe, and it was just about promoting it. Alec promoted it through the website, um, through Facebook. I promoted it through my personal Facebook and also through my Silences Platinum network. Um, for this one, this is the quickest campaign I have ever done. It was less than 24 hours that we raised over $2,000. Um, I believe 2000 was our cap. I think we got to about to 2200 And I mean, I was sitting at my desk at work and just seeing donation, donation, donation. My phone just kept going off and I was in shock. For a lot of the campaigns that I do, they're lesser known silent film stars, which is one reason that they could have fallen through the cracks. I. I, I guess I just assumed that Joe would kind of be the same because it's not Buster himself, it's his father. But again, it was maybe even less than 22 hours. It was just constant donations, which was just blowing my mind at work. It was, it was so touching and amazing because usually when I tell people like in my personal life, like friends, family, coworkers, I tell them what they're doing, I get kind of a weird look. Because um, <laughs> people kind of expect me when I say, oh, I do headstone stuff and I, you know, do a lot of cemetery tours, they kind of think I'm, I look like Morticia Adams or something. And I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. This is about making sure someone is remembered and someone as important as Joe Keaton is remembered. And then just going through the rest of the steps, you have to pay the headstone company. Um, the documents of the cemetery, like I said, for all the headstones I've done, the owners are me and the next of kin. It doesn't really give me much clout other than I can say I own Joe Keaton's headstone. But um, <laughs> it just means that if somebody were to want to change it in the future, they would just have to go through me and the next of kin. So it's, it's not, I mean, it is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> delivery is interesting. I have delivered three by hand. Uh, my headstone company is in Long Beach. Thankfully, they delivered this one. They did deliver Joe to Inglewood because there's, I'm not lifting a bronze. I mean, the granite ones are a little bit easier. I have driven through LA with headstones in the back of my car. It's, it's been very, it's interesting. Um, so after delivery, I didn't add this to the process. I usually like to do some kind of gathering. It's hard to schedule it. We can't do it the day that the headstone itself is laid. A lot of the cemeteries tell me it's just, we'll do it when we have time. Because it's not a, a, neat, a really quick, like we need it done now. So usually it takes a couple weeks. I think Joe took a little bit longer. Um, but I just want to do something where myself, Alec came out, um, a couple of other silent film friends, a lot of some of my other tachophile gravestone friends. And we just come out and it's just a chance to kind of remember, appreciate, drop off flowers, um, and kind of talk about other projects that we have going on or that I have in my brain. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention was what I put on the headstone. I like to go simple. And usually, like with my Silence is Platinum stuff, I share a lot of pictures um, or gifts. <laughs> um, but when it comes to headstones, I have seen so many headstones that have pictures on them that have been damaged and vandalized, and I would hate to put in all this effort and see that happen. Um, so I usually go with something simple with a name, their deeds, and then some kind of little epitaph. I've done, you know, silent film actress or a quote. Joe, we just went with Vaudevillian and Silent Comedian. Some people wanted me to specify, you know, it was jo Joseph Keaton III or something. I didn't think it was necessary since they're buried in two separate cemeteries. Um, so I hope everyone agrees, which is kind of too late. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Um, <laughs> but it was, it's very 
I still go there and visit it um, when I'm out there. And it's so cool to walk <coughs> by what was once just grass and see this awesome headstone. Because um, even if people are there and they don't know who's buried there, they can walk by it and go, hey, wait a minute, and kind of get a bee in their bonnet and kind of think about who that was. So as I mentioned, I've done a couple of these um, off to the side, which it's not, it didn't come up too clear. But that is for silent film actress Catherine Grant. She was in some Lauren Hardy shorts. She was also in some Charlie Chase shorts. Uh, she was buried, she died in the 1930s, and so we think that she wasn't marked because of financial reasons. She was kind of at the end of her career. Uh, Corliss Palmer was the last one that I marked. She's a silent film actress. Um, a friend of mine just wrote a book about her, so it correlated really well. They actually raised the funds for her on the day, on her death day. So it was, it was pretty cool that we came up with the money for that one. Uh, Joe, of course, he's the fancy one. Um, and then, or actually, Edmund Lowe was the last one I did. Wow, I can't. Yeah, Edmund Lowe. <laughs> he was the last one he did. He is at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery. Uh, that one was really cool. It put me in touch with his step-grandson, who's also related to the Zookers and the Lowe's. So he has become my new best friend. Uh, he just has so many stories, and he was so gung-ho and ready to mark Edmund as being great. Um, he actually said, well, you marked him, so now you can call him Eddie. I'm like, you can't call him Eddie. Like, that's it's Edmund Lowe, you know? <laughs> so, like I said, I usually go with the granite ones because they are cheaper and easier to raise, especially for some of the lesser-known um, actors. But Joe, with the beautiful bronze, less than 24 hours, it's amazing. So now comes the bane of my existence. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I can tell you recognize some of these names. Um, <coughs> yeah, some of them, I still, I look at them like, how are they not marked? Even Joe Keenum, how are they, how is he not marked? Um, yeah, there's so many of these. Some of these, um, like Bronco Billy Anderson, he is actually in the utility columbarium at Forest Lawn Glendale, which is a utility closet. Ooh. Yeah, so he's in there. There's uh, Hobart Bosworth is also in there. Um, a lot of these, we're trying to get verification that their ashes are at Chapel Pines Crematorium right now. We don't know if they're actually there or if they were just cremated there. It keeps going. Sydney Green Street, another one that is in the closet or the utility closet. I to watch it. He's in the utility closet. Yeah, Thelma Hill, unfortunately, is in the closet. She's like at the top of my list, so I want to get her. Alice Lake, that's another one. I want to get Alice March for sure. Margaret Dumont is at the Chapel of the Pines. That's another one where we don't know if her ashes are kept there, because that's kind of what happened with Thomas Mitchell. We assumed his ashes were there, and it's been months, and they're still like, they don't know where he is. I actually, when I um, go back home to California, I will have his death certificate waiting for me because we have to take that in and see if they can find him that way. But his family has been really supportive. I believe they're his nephews, his great nephews. So if we can't find him, we're gonna at least get him a cenotaph at Hollywood Forever. So we'll get something for him. There's also a rumor of family lore that he was donated to a museum, but that's the extent of the knowledge. Yeah, both Moore brothers are unmarked. It's I mean, I look at the spreadsheet on my computer and I'm like, oh my god. And most of these are in California. There are a couple that 
that are spread out. Um, Richard Heal, uh, Fred Wynn was another one. Harry Davenport, he's another one. I'm actually going to New York after this, and so I'm going to check out a couple more unmarked. I'm just adding them to the list. So this is the current status of what we're doing. A friend of mine, Arthur Dark, he does Hollywood radio <laughs> tours on YouTube. He's a very good friend of mine. He is starting a campaign for Pinto Colvin, who was the original Bozo the Clown, and he also did the voice of uh, Pee Wee. Goofy, thank you. Um, so he actually wanted to do that. Arthur is also a composer, which Pinto was also, so he really wanted to do that one. I did all the dirty work to find the next of kin, but Arthur's gonna do that one, so we're super excited about that. The Hollywood Forever one, so those names that I showed you, 10 of them are buried at Hollywood Forever. Tyler, who is the owner of Hollywood Forever, is helping us tremendously with these 10 silent film stars. He's gonna help us along the process since it is kind of a tall order. So right now we're researching Next of Kin. We found Next of Kin for most of them. There's a few more that we're looking for. I think we're gonna do one giant fundraiser and then mark them separately to kind of give them their own new like spot as with Aikin, which I can't believe so mark. So that's still in the process. It is Daily, I'll check back to it and start doing research on family. But if any of you have done genealogy research, you know it's like you're going 50 miles an hour, then you immediately hit a roadblock. And especially for the ones that have died in like the 19 teens, it gets even trickier. But Tyler said, as long as we can show that we have done everything we can to reach out to next of kin, he's going to help us out. So that's all in the making. Um, so I should mention with this, along with Silence is Platinum, uh, I created this, right now it's just a Facebook group. It's called Marking the Stars. And that's where I do a lot of my updates on this. I do it on Silence is Platinum, but Marking the Stars has been extremely helpful because I've had other people come in and help me research. So I'm not just being a librarian and also checking out books and also like, okay, gravestones, you know. I need help, so this has been Amazing. So if you saw a name on that list that really interests you, let me know. Uh, my, if you can reach out to me at Silence is Platinum, or my email is silent underscore Jess at Hotmail, let me know and we can get something started. Because that's how most of these have happened. Someone just kind of dropped something into my lap and said, what if we start this one? What if we do this? What if the Buster Keaton, they're doing an unveiling, why don't we do this in connection with that? That's all it takes. Because, I mean, if I hit it my way, they'd all be marked already. But it really takes all of us coming together, not with just financial resources, but with the love of silent film and wanting to keep this Hollywood history just continuing. And this is kind of a small way that I hope to do that. So thank you, and I can answer any questions. <laughs> Buster himself picked that out, and I'm, again, 
Well, I wouldn't mind being haunted by Buster, but I don't want to. I don't want to upset something like that. So I did not feel comfortable with that. I passed the information on to the next of kin and told them the cemetery said you can do it. Here's what they stated. This is the cost. But I personally don't feel comfortable doing that. So it might happen in the future, but I personally don't want to upset that. Jessica, just to fill in the blanks, because you and I have not met, I'm the person. The person? I'm Buster. Oh, hi! Yeah. It's good to meet you in person. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see who asked the question, but uh, Jessica and I had worked on this, and we ran into these little problems. And to answer the rest of that, Myra and Louise are in the same yes. lot. And Harry is, or my dad, mm -hmm. is next to them. Yeah, so it became a bit of an issue. Yeah. And that's why I went like, in a sense, backed off for a while. And uh, I don't know, we may, you know, we may be able, you and I may be able to get back together and see if we yeah, can if work out a way to do this. Yeah, if there's some way to do it, um, I know the cemetery was just like, no, you have to do it certain ways. Yeah. Um, but if there's a way to do it so all of them are marked, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be great. I'd be totally for that. Hopefully, uh, who, who asked the question? <laughs> there's <laughs> Oh, okay. Hopefully, oh, okay. you know, yeah. kind of the blanks there a little bit. Okay. Yeah, but it has been worked on. We've just kind of come to a halt for a while. Yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah, this might be a naive question, but if, if a plot is, is unmarked, is, is it always easy to find out where it actually is? For the cemetery, Yes, for me, I am very directionally challenged. Um, I mean, for my New York trip, Arthur made me Google Maps with like pinpoints. I'm terrible with directions. But if you go into the cemetery office, they have really good maps and they'll say, okay, so you come here, look for Jones, go four down, he's here. Um, so, especially for unmarked ones, unmarked ones, you're like, yeah, sure, let's we'll find the plot somewhere. Like where Alice Lake is, it's just this giant area of unmarked. So she's somewhere in there. But the cemetery, even though it's unmarked on the ground, the cemetery has records of every filled plot. <laughs> yeah. No, it's no, please, that's fine. Yes? Are all the uh, people that you listed, are, are most of them at least, uh, are they unmarked because they couldn't afford headstones? Or do you think maybe people didn't want headstones? Or, because I just find it very strange, Thomas Mitchell, City Green Street, yeah, some of them, um, like I said, the first step is always reaching out to the family. Sydney Green Street is one of those where the family sounds like they kind of don't want to mess with that. Um, so when it comes to situations like that, I back off. That's always the first thing, though. Do you know why they were being unmarked? Do they want a headstone? A lot of them are at um, Pierce Brothers Valhalla in North Hollywood. They were all at the Motion Picture Country Home. And that's who paid for their plot. But they didn't pay for the headstone. So that's another thing that we, we reached out to them to see, do you have any other records of this? Did it say why? Things like that. Um, there's a couple that were paid for by various like vaudeville agencies. Some were donations. So, I mean, a lot of the older silent film stars, the ones like the ones at Hollywood Forever, they died in the teens, 20s, so I'm not sure, because some of them were in the heyday of their career, so I'm not sure a lot of the time it just comes to asking the next of kin if they you know any reason. Mm -hmm. Yes? How did you come in and help you with the area? How do you find the family? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do a lot of, I mean, it helps to be a librarian because I'm a professional nerd, so I do a lot of researching. There's a lot of Ancestry.com, there's white pages, there's Facebook. I've had people say, hey, I know so-and-so's, I know how to reach so-and-so's great niece, what about this? It's a lot of crossing your fingers. I mean, Pinto Colvix, that's, that's taken me over a year to find his next of kin, who are very open to the same with Edmund Lowe, it's just managing to find that key person. So that's always, that's the toughest part. That's, that's the toughest part for sure. So it's a process. <laughs> yes? Edmund is interesting. 
Edmund is for sure at the Chapel of the Pines. The person that put him in there or signed off on his remains was his accountant. <laughs> that's as far as we've gotten with that one. He, that's one at least we know for sure that he is there. And according to the records, it wasn't family. So it's, an, it's one of those cases where we can ask, okay, his family wasn't involved in this. Can we, what, they did tell us that one of the ways to ensure that we could get a lot of their remains would be to sue them. If we sue the crematorium, then we can get wrecked. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to stop. No, we're not doing that. We're going to do this as nicely as we can. Um, but yeah, it is when I tell people Edmund Gwynn, they're like, wait, what? Or even Fred Gwynn. Or Richard Keel. They're like, wait, wait a minute. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a question mark, sure. Yes. You may not want to get into this. But Let's one, do it. One <laughs> time we the What's the status on his marker that we were told that was removed for cleaning? <laughs> Last time I was there, it was there. What was this? This was uh, several years ago uh, on the internet that his, uh, his marker was taken down for cleaning. It's there. Good. Yeah, it was there recently. It was there. A lot of he, his crypt front and as well as like Marble and Mars get stained because of all the lipstick on it. <laughs> <laughs> it true story, it's, it's like it's stained red with lipstick kisses. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know if the plate, the plate, it does look newer, so I don't know what they've done with the old one. I mean, it, when he originally died, because he's in a rented, technically a rented plot, um, he was supposed to get this gigantic, like if you've seen Douglas Fairbanks, that it was supposed to be like that, but giant, and then he's still laying there. Um, so, but yes, last time I was there, it was there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, I take my bow. Thank you. Thank you.